Good evening. Welcome to another exciting edition of Sewing the Bourbon. Back from Charlie's basement tonight. Charlie, tell them what we're doing. Tonight, we're doing Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace. So if you're a bourbon drinker, whiskey drinker, and you're anything like we are and have been drinking for a while, you're even a little surprised that we're doing a Buffalo Trace episode. But that's where we are today because Buffalo Trace has become an allocated bourbon, a hard to find bourbon, something that was readily available, what I would call the, the quintessential shelfer, right? Wherever yes, you went in America, so. you could find a bottle of Buffalo Trace. 100%. Is that the case now, Glenn? Uh, depends on where you are. It does. But for the most part, it's uh, becoming a little on the scarcer side. So. It is. Every, everyone's wild about Buffalo Trace, not just the Buffalo Trace, but other Buffalo Trace products, Sazerac products. Absolutely. Um, Weller, I Pappy Van Winkle, you name, name a, a Buffalo Trace product and... It is in high demand. Allocated. Allocated. A and that's, so digging into this episode, we, we decided we had these two single barrel selections from Buffalo Trace, and then we have a our control bottle, a regular bottle of Buffalo Trace we'll be drinking tonight. But in kind of doing our research for the episode, you know, we, if you're kind of new to bourbon, you think, oh, Buffalo Trace, that's a, you know, a standby, it's been around forever. And really and truly, the, the brand hasn't been around for that long. It was released in 1999. It was 1999. And speaking of 1999, this bottle here in the middle is possibly from that first release. It was purchased around 99, 2000. Um, it's been sitting in my, <laughs> in my liquor cabinet for that whole time. That's why it has a different color top on it, if you notice that, because we just opened it and the cork. I broke it, I broke yes. the cork. So this bottle has been around for 23 years, just waiting for this moment right here. So, but Buffalo Trace as a distillery, again, we think of them today and the products that they put out and the brands that they have, whether it's the E.H. Taylor, the Elmer T. Lee, the Pappy Van Winkle, the Wellers, steeped in history, brands steeped in history, but the distillery itself and that portfolio has only been around since 99. And um, now that's not to say that there isn't bourbon history at that distillery. The, the distillery has been distilling, someone's been distilling on that site since around 1775. Yeah, over 200 years, supposedly it's the oldest continuously utilized distillery in the United States. Yeah, and it was previously before it was Buffalo Trace, it was most recently the George T. Stagg Distillery when it was purchased by Sazerac Company in 1992. So in Kentucky, in distilleries, especially older distilleries, you can't kick over a rock without finding some sort of awesome history about our native spirit. Yes, and if you look through, you know, I was doing a little research for this episode and um, the names of the founders of Buffalo Trace you mean through, the, through time. Right, <laughs> yeah, you mean guys like Hancock and Taylor and Blanton. Yes. Were all people, real people that were at that site, so. Albert again, T. Lee, just, Happy Van Winkle, just, Julian Van Winkle the second. Keep <laughs> going down the list, they were all there. So yes, it's a new brand, Yes, it, well, we say new, it's 23 years old, 24 years old now, but, uh, but just steeped in history at that site, so. Absolutely, and I am, uh, I'm, I'm kind of ready to, to get jumped in here and, and start tasting some of this. So I, do you I, have anything I, else to, to add before I, we start? We'll kind of drink and talk as we go. Okay. Um, so I think we'll start with our control, which is our 23 year old bottle of uh, Buffalo Trace. So Buffalo Trace has an undisclosed mash bill. They do say they have two different mash bills. They are affectionately known as mash bill one. And the other is known as- Oh, wait, let me guess. Mash bill four. No, Mashville 2, that was a good guess. <laughs> Close. Uh, Mashville 1, which is Buffalo Trace, Benchmark, Ancient Age, um, there's one I'm forgetting, Blanton's. Those are all the low rye Mashville. 
Um, everything else that's not a weeded falls into the higher rye. When they say low rye, they mean less than 10%. So, so your Elmer T. Lee, your Buffalo Trace, what else? Anything else? Uh, your Elmer T. Lee, Buffalo Trace, oh, Eagle Rare, E.H. Taylor Stag, Benchmark. Uh, those are all mash bill number one. So shall we, uh, shall we nose? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll cheer. Yeah, cheers to nosing. Before, so Charlie and I were noticing that this bottle, the bourbon appears to be a little bit darker. Yeah, it does. Than, it definitely than does. the modern day bottle. Not, we don't know why that is. Yeah. <laughs> if we would have thought this out, we would have tried to find a modern or a more recent bottle to compare that to. But then you're comparing four and really and truly we just wanted sure. to drink this. So. Yeah. Really nice nose on that. Yeah, it's got a nice nose. Um, so Buffalo Trace, 90 proof. Um, kind of that sweet spot of just proofy enough. Uh, nice, sweet, mellow. No, no ethanol. No mellow, ethanol at little all. Little bit of corn, little little syrup. Yeah, I was going to, like a little burnt sugar, just a mm -hmm. little bit though. Nothing too crazy. It's a nice yeah. kind of quintessential bourbon nose. A little cold. Cheers to your 24-year-old bourbon. It's got nice legs. Mm -hmm. You know what that tastes like? It tastes like Buffalo Trace. <laughs> no, it's a um, love it or hate it, um, good, bad, indifferent, you know, whatever. Buffalo Trace is, is, is a nice, really nice bourbon because it, you don't feel any sort of way about it. It, it well, until recently, mm -hmm. it's, it's great in cocktails. It's perfectly fine for a sipping bourbon. It's nothing crazy or transcendent. It's not gonna, you know, make your head explode with cascading flavors or anything like that. But it does whatever you need it to do. It's a great utilitarian bourbon to me. Right. Um, surprisingly to me, my first sip was a little hot. A little spice. A little when spice, you say spice, a little pepper. Yeah, a little pepper yeah. on the tongue. It is our first sip of the night, though. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm anxious to kind of take another sip here and see if that mellows out a little bit. And I will tell you, it's been a while since I've drank yeah, Buffalo Yeah, just trays. plain just old Buffalo plain old, I, I couldn't even tell you when the last time. Well, in our area, so Kentucky in southern Indiana where we live, it was one of those things where Buffalo Trace was just everywhere. So we never really drank it because... Anywhere you went, have Buffalo Trace. I mean, for a lot of bars and a lot of restaurants in our area in the previous years, it was a well bourbon. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, I can vividly remember five or six years ago going into liquor barns and party marts and there being 25 stack case right. displays with a giant Buffalo statue and Buffalo Trace for $14.99 on special. And now, if they have it, it's probably on a table limit one per. Well, and if you've been paying attention, you know that Buffalo Trace just opened a new still, correct? Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to give them much more capacity. So I'm wondering if it's we're going to get to the point where their products are a little bit easier to find. Well, that's, or is that going to a lot of that going overseas? That's a great point. And the thing to remember about that is, yes, they doubled their immediate production. So they Buffalo Trace can now produce 60,000 gallons of alcohol per day with their f 40 foot tall column still and all a lot that of stuff. gallons it's a lot of gallons however buffalo trace is said to be between six and eight years old so that means production started let's just say two weeks ago it's going to be a minimum of six to eight years before we even get buffalo trace weller 12 is you want to guess how old weller 12 is mm, let me guess do some math um, 12? 12 years old. Huh. So it's going to be a minimum of 12 years old. And then you just go down the line for the pappies and everything else. So yes, it helps, but they're just hoping at this point to be able to keep up with demand. So sure. um, I, that's a really nice pour. I, it, it's, it's a low rye mash bill, which is not usually in my wheelhouse and it's high corn, but it is not corny. It is not corny. At all. Uh, I mean, you can taste the corn a little bit. Yeah, but um, in I'm a getting a little way. bit more on my second on my second uh, taste there, I was picking up a little bit more of the vanillas yeah. and uh, a little bit of that uh, cola flavor to it that is, you know, yeah. so. 
it, it famously also, my your my gut. note that I always pick up. So it does linger a little longer for a ninety proof it too. Mm-hmm. It kind of hangs around a little bit in a good way, um, a welcoming way. You kind of want to drink some more. Um, and as you can see, we have three different bottles. The one in the middle is our control or our regular Buffalo Trace, and on each side are single barrel selections. So this one here is from Cox's and Evergreen. It is a Buffalo Trace. It is still 90 proof, just like any other one, but it is a single barrel selection. So we're going to see if those single barrels are kind of worth it. Are, do they stand out? Are they really different from Buffalo Trace, the regular? Well, we cleanse our palate with water. Yours is water, right? Not vodka. Ah, like yes. Water. So I'm anxious, we, anxious to see the difference. Yeah, definitely notice a different <clears throat> in color from, from the other. A lot lighter. A lot lighter. Yep. Um, to your point though, it still has got really great cling to the glass. It does, it doesn't. Um, I mean, it just the, puts a ring the, around the top. Yeah, the first one, it actually kind of developed kinda legs, down. but this just kind of sticks. Yeah. Really different nose. Yeah. Really different um, nose. I get I get a, a more kind of floral. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Kind of it, it's, on that. It's really more so. of a muted yeah nose, not so much in your face, but and this one's the, full disclosure. This is one of my bottles. It's been open for probably I don't know maybe six ten months somewhere around there. But let's give it a taste. Yeah, cheers. It's amazing how different that tastes than the first one. Really remarkable. Yeah. Um, I don't get really any, uh, so none of the pepper. None of the pepper at all. Not any of the sweetness that I got on the first one. I get um, really big, heavy notes of like dark chocolate, Mm -hmm. um, licorice. It's very mellow. I mean, a, a dangerous bottle because there's no burn, there's no Kentucky hug. Um, it, it's a very, it's not complex. No, it isn't. It's, it's, once again, just like the nose, it's a little muted, but it's a very pleasant mm-hmm. flavor. There's, I do, I do get the licorice. Um, I felt like this one actually drank higher than a 90 proof. Yeah. The first one, this one does not. It, and it, it is, that one is first open. That one's had time to have sure. some alcohol sure. evaporated off, so that makes sense. It does make sense. But definitely t- a, yeah. a totally different kind of animal, both on the nose, on the palate, on the finish. So if you were to, if this were a blind, you wouldn't. I would it. never guess these were the same two. Wouldn't guess they were the same. I don't think I would guess this is ninety proof. No. What What would you put it up? I, I would have guessed like an 80. I mean, substantially less yeah. than 90. And, that, and that's a big drop from 90 to 80. I mean, very mellow, very mm-hmm. mild. Um, like I said, not overly complex, mm-hmm. but, but uh, interesting that it's totally different. Yeah, I would have guessed on this one, I would have guessed 100 proof. Yeah. This one, I, it, it definitely, I don't know, 80, 90. Definitely not... As proofy as, as yeah. Now I'm the, super excited original. about that third one. Tell us about the third one, Charlie. So the third one, got lucky, found this one at a local local liquor store. Um, it is from the Mega Liquor Beer and Wine, which is Mega Liquor Beer Mega and Wine. Liquor Beer and Wine, which is I believe like a local co-op. They own. A couple of different independent liquor stores okay um, and snagged a single barrel and this is another thing in, in the current bourbon economy um, you used to be able to Thanks, find sir. these all the time um, and now a single barrel selections from uh, the old Buffalo Trace are harder and harder to come by similar color yeah similar I do feel like this one's in between yes. the other two not kind of, quite as light as this one, not quite it's as dark. It's got a really interesting color. It, almost like a, like a sepia. Like, yeah. Like, a, like it's almost translucent. I see that. I can see that. It's, uh, 
which is really surprising out of a six to seven year old or older mm -hmm. 90 proof bourbon that it would kind of have that color. But all right, here we go. Nose it up. I feel like we're heading back towards this way. I do too. It's a little more in your face than, than number yeah. two here. Not quite as in your face as number one. Yep. And again, a fresh pop. We just popped that cork mm -hmm. minutes ago. And I hate, I'm trying to come up with some, some notes here and I'm struggling there's, to there's come not, up with any really specific notes. It's not a complex bourbon. No, it, it it's nothing that's going to, it, it's a, and I don't want to say a beginner's bourbon, but it, it's a, it's a shelfer. It's a daily. It's nothing that's going to wow you. You're not going to hand it to somebody and smell this and cascading right, flavors, right. but I'm having a hard time just getting anything. Yeah. I'm so. getting a little more corn. You know, yeah, I'm finally little, starting to get some, a little uh, of the sweetness. Uh, right. Let's taste it. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, so the pepperiness is back. Yeah. Um, not quite. When Once again, that was our first drink. The bottle was just opened, so... <laughs> Not quite as peppery as, as the first one, but it's it's there. Whereas number two, there was no pepperiness at all. That one's a little more corn forward. Mm -hmm. I get the, the kind of that sweet corn. It's almost, it's really pushing to what the limit of what I like in terms of that corniness. But it almost tastes like, to your point on the nose, if we combine those two, mm -hmm. this would be its baby. Like that, this is what it would taste you know like what? if we combine those. I agree one hundred percent with that. Because it it's it's smooth. It has a little bit of that dark chocolate and the licorice, but it also has that sweetness of the corn. So, but it is interesting. They all taste very different. Yeah. But familiar. I'm not. I'm not getting any of the vanilla notes on this one. Mm -mm. I'm, I do get the dark chocolate, though. Yeah. That bitter dark. I, chocolate. I get sweet, and then that kind of bitter bourbon mm -hmm. oaky finish. The oak. I don't get yeah. any fruit. None at all. None. What? Which you probably aren't going to out of a high corn, low rye mash mm -hmm. bill. Um, but again, really, I mean, a tried and true staple, and hopefully, we'll start to see more of it if Buffalo Trace can kind of keep up with that demand. Yeah, and I'll be honest, it, once again, nothing wrong with it. No. Not bad, not great. Yep. Yeah, uh, am I gonna rush back out to try to find some more? No, you know, I'm, I'm good with my, uh, however long it's been since I've had it now, yeah. be a great mixer. <laughs> yeah. For, for me, you know, make a nice old fashioned, especially this bottle here. Yeah. Or, or this one, maybe not so much uh, number two here. You know what it is? It's, it's a great bottle to have on your bar. Absolutely. Not a secondary, you know, not like you said, not wait in line for it, but if you find it, to have it, just to be able to have, you've got friends and family over, oh wow, you've got a Buffalo Trace, or if nothing else, just for you to have every once mm -hmm. in a while to kind of remind yourself, oh, that's what Buffalo Trace is. So. You know, the kind of tried and true, it, it still is what it has been, which is a really good, respectable, solid, 90 proof shelfer. Yeah, I would, what I would really like to do is put this in a blind mm -hmm. and see how it fares against yeah. some of the other readily available, yet not so allocated, not so hard to find bourbons and yeah. see how it, how it comes out and we've done quite a few blind episodes and i think if if anything what blinds will reveal is when you take away the marketing and the packaging and your preconceived notions of what's good and what's not and you're left with only your senses you know the the cream's going to kind of rise to the right. top so to speak so it, it depending on what it's up against, maybe it holds up. Maybe it doesn't. Well, and really, I mean, when I was in Florida a few months ago, I walked into a store. There were 
eight bottles on the shelf for $24.99. Yep. You know what? And that is exactly what that bottle should cost. Absolutely. And I was at a Walgreens in rural Indiana and saw eight bottles on the shelf for $24.99. And I thought that kind of makes me happy because yeah. I didn't buy one, but I knew somebody was going to go into that store in the next couple of days and get really excited yeah. because they got a, a bottle of Buffalo Trace. And for sub $30 bottle of yeah. bourbon, uh, it's all day long. Go back to that one and okay. knows it. Just knows it. <laughs> it's a lot more corn. Yeah, but, a lot more yeah. corn. But it does have a nose as the other ones really It does. Didn't. Boy, interesting. So what have we learned today, Glenn? If anything. What have we learned? Um, well, man, that's still, there's a lot of pepper on that for me. Yeah, it just kind of overrides any other, yeah, it, any other note. It kind of grabs you. Yeah, but it's amazing how different that one is now mm -hmm. going back than the other two. Yeah. So what we have learned is that Buffalo Trace is a decent, solid overall bourbon, especially for the price. If you get it at retail, yeah. which you shouldn't be paying over retail for Buffalo Trace. Right. I paid. $34.99 for this one, but it is a single barrel selection. I had no problem with that because there's probably only a couple hundred of those bottles. So, and it allows me to do what I love, which is compare one to the other. Right. And so. once again, what we've learned is, look how interesting it is. Three, same, same product, <laughs> three different profiles. Absolutely. And the... The thing that in doing our research on this and kind of revisiting Buffalo Trace as a brand that jumped into my mind is thinking back to 1999. And when bourbon drinkers saw these bottles on the shelf, it was, for all intents and purposes, a startup. And there are a lot of startup bourbons out there, a lot of craft distilleries. There's a lot of new brands and mash bills and experimental things coming out from big distilleries and it reminds us that buffalo trace one of the most awarded distilleries of the last 10 or 20 years started as this and that's all they were so yes they were owned by size rack but they started with just buffalo trace and a handful of other brands so and a lot of history. And a lot of history. So the brands and the, the bottles that you see on your shelf now, who knows what they will be in five years or 10 years or 20. So we keep preaching it. Find those weird bottles. Try that stuff. Pop those corks and see what's out there that uh, may be amazing. 100%. Charlie, do we have anything else tonight? on this Buffalo Trace. I don't think so. As usual, please be sure to like and subscribe and follow Glenn as the Whiskey Realtor on Whiskey TikTok. Realtor. Anything else? Facebook group? We have a Facebook group. Follow us on Facebook yes. and Instagram. Instagram, Facebook, so in the bourbon. And I think that wraps it up for tonight, Charlie. It absolutely does. It's Thank good you. To, it's good to be home. It's good to be back in the basement. And we will be on tour more this year if you like those episodes. And uh, until next time, We'll see you in the next episode. Peace out. Keep your bunghole tight. Bunghole. <laughs> Testing. One, two, three. Back in the basement again. Here we are to drink some bourbon. Back in the basement again. We're losing viewers. I can okay. feel subscribers leaving. <laughs>